Hello everyone, welcome back to Financial News. Today is October 31st, 2022. I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4. My co-host, Paul Munical from Ameriprise Financial. Paul, I'm um, let you give us an update and um, Ameriprise has given us the news as of this morning. So let you go ahead first. Thanks, Ron. Um, I'm going to keep talking about earnings because that's what is important right now. And um, as expected, forward estimates do continue to fall. Now, through last Friday, 52% of S&P 500 companies had reported their financial results for the third quarter. Another 33% are scheduled to report their results this week. Um, aggregate earnings per share for the index are now seen as rising 2.1% year over year on sales growth of 9.4%. That data is all according to fact set. Um, now, as we've noted previously, the energy sector accounts for most of the earnings upside. Excluding the energy sector, the S&P 500 EPS growth would be down 4.8% year over year on sales growth of 6.3%. Now, at the end of the quarter, which was September 30th, Consensus estimates were looking for Q3 EPS growth of 3% and sales growth of 8.5%. Now, actual results have genuinely or generally been better than expected. Um, again, according to FactSet, 71% of companies have reported better than expected EPS results, a measure that is modestly better than long-term averages, but below recent trends. Over the last five years, a historically strong 77% of S&P 500 companies have reported better than expected EPS results. Revenues too have performed well. As with earnings, the energy sector is offering a strong boost while the very strong U.S. dollar is offering a strong drag. All 11 S&P 500 sectors, however, are projected to see revenue growth. So far, 68% of, of reporting companies have released better than expected sales results versus a five-year average of 69%. Now, just as importantly, forward estimates continue to see material cuts. As of Friday, consensus estimates for Q4, they look for EPS of $55.97. This is down sharply from the $58.13 expected for the period at the end of September and the $60.81 forecast at mid-year. Likewise, EPS estimates for 2023 now look for full year earnings of $233.36 down from the $241.67 at the end of September and believe it or not, $250.94 at the end of June. Um, I can get more details and specific information on earnings estimates if someone out there is looking for it and we can talk about more in future shows. All right, thanks, Paul. Now, Ameriprise said, uh, send this information in. The U.S. stock index futures are lower this morning after a strong week that saw the S&P 500 gain 4%. And we were talking about that earlier. Yep, it was a nice week last week. Um, like you said, um, futures are down, but as we always say, that's just how the market's intended to open, not how it's gonna close. So we gotta let the day play out. And the markets in Asia closed mostly higher, but Hong Kong bucked the trend down 1%. The COVID, uh, based on COVID outbreaks, Europe's tra uh, trading mixed at uh, midday today. Treasury yields are modestly higher with the 10-year at 4% and the two-year just under 4.5%. Again, as we always say, if the yields are up, the price of the bonds are down. Um, it's an inverse relationship. Always. Gold is flat, Bitcoin uh, futures are up 1.5%, and WTI crude is down 1.6%. Now, for the 
Year-to-date index percent returns, S&P 500, a minus 17%, Dow Jones, a minus 8%, NASDAQ, a minus 29%. Those numbers are starting to change. After last week, it helped. Yeah. Um, we just got to keep it going through the end of the year. All right. Thank you, Paul, for that update. And stay with us. We'll be right back with a, our show called Your Money with a topic that of interest to you that Paul has put together. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And thank you for staying with us. We're back with our show called Your Money. The topic today is what you need to know during the enrollment period for insurance. And Paul's going to touch on that, Paul. Absolutely. Um, for anyone still employed, um, we're entering open enrollment season, which is usually the yearly period when you have a chance to make changes to your employee benefits package. Um, if you're like most employees in the U.S., open enrollment may be the only opportunity you'll have during the entire year to alter your health care benefits. Um, health insurance, it's, it can seem complicated because there are so many moving parts. It's helpful to understand the different terms and acronyms you are likely to encounter as you review your options. So today we're going to go over some of the most common terms and acronyms. Um, first is premiums. Any form of insurance coverage involves paying premiums, which is essentially the amount you and your employer pay to your insurer every month for your health insurance. Now most employer-based health insurance today requires that you pay a portion of the monthly premium for coverage. The payments you are required to make are generally deducted from each paycheck. Next, let's talk about deductibles. Um, many insurance plans include a deductible. Now, in the case of health insurance, this is the amount of money you usually have to pay in total, that's usually in a, in a given year, before your health insurance assumes the costs. So, for example, a plan with a $1,000 deductible would require that you pay all bills up to $1,000 out of your pocket before insurance coverage would kick in. Uh, let's talk about copays or copayments. This is a fixed amount you pay each time you use a medical service. So, for example, each doctor's visit might require a $20 copay. If your insurance plan includes copays, this amount is required even if you've met your deductible for the year. Next, let's talk about HMOs and PPOs. Um, these are two different forms of health insurance coverage. HMOs are health maintenance organizations, which often are available for lower monthly premiums, but come with some restrictions. For example, most require that all of your health care needs be coordinated through your primary care physician. With HMOs, you are also typically limited to services from a specific network of providers covered by the plan. Now, PPOs stand for Preferred Provider Organizations, which tend to have higher premiums than HMOs. With PPOs, referrals from your primary physician typically aren't required and you generally, generally have more flexibility in choosing providers. Next, let's talk about HSAs, with our, which are health savings accounts. Some health insurance plans come with an HSA feature. This allows you to set aside money on a pre-tax basis to pay for qualified medical expenses. You can use the savings amount to cover expenses for deductibles, copays, and other out-of-pocket medical costs. By using pre-tax dollars, the net cost for you for these services is reduced. 
HSAs also automatically roll over depending on your plan and um, any unused funds from each year for future use, again, depending on your plan. Um, it could be even used potentially years from now when you retire, but again, depending on your plan. Um, there's something called a high deductible health plan, HDHP. These plans are offered in conjunction with an HSA. HDHPs often are available for a lower monthly premium, but as the name implies, require that you carry a higher deductible. Much or all of the deductible can come out of the money you set aside in the HSA. If you anticipate few major healthcare needs, HDHPs can be an option for you to consider to limit your premium costs. Next, let's talk about FSAs, which are flexible spending accounts. Now, this benefit option lets you pay many out-of-pocket medical expenses with tax-free dollars. You set money aside into an FSA with each paycheck on a pre-tax basis. The funds accumulated can be used to cover the cost of copays, deductibles, qualified prescription drugs, and other medical expenses. Most of the money must be used before the year is out, but your employer may allow you to carry it over for a short period into the following year, or include a provision that lets you spend up to $500 of this year's FSA savings in the following year. Again, all plan specific. Make sure to inquire with your benefits provider if you have questions about the specifics of your plan. Making the right choices for your circumstances can result in better coverage that you have today and potentially save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars a year. It's worthwhile to carefully review your options and choose the most appropriate plan for your needs. Of course, the thought behind this is choosing the proper plan can help save you money, which can help you save money then in your 401k or your other retirement plans. So getting your health care choices right is critical. And you know, we just gave you some few guidelines today, but always consult with your HR rep at your company for specifics regarding your plan. Yeah, this is the critical period to make those decisions. Most companies, enrollment time is now. My own company, I'm doing enrollment right now. It's mm -hmm. this week, and most companies, this is the time. Um, so consult your HR rep, do your research, because choosing the right plan can potentially save you money. Yes, exactly. Or uh, cover insurance needs that you may have to increase your coverage as well. Yes. And uh, after you choose your talk with your HR rep and choose your plan, if you find you are saving extra money, feel free to give me a call and I can discuss with you ways to save that money for retirement or whatever your goal may be for that money. Um, again, my number is 708-226-3412. All right. Thank you, Paul. And the information from Ameriprise Financial, I'm Ron Jankowski with uh, Channel 4 and Palos Heights. We wish you a good investment day.